Doctor, Dr. Peter Schnau from Copenhagen, Denmark. The title of the presentation is Intensity versus Duration of Cycling, Impact on All Cause and Coronary Heart Disease Mortality, the Copenhagen City Heart Study. Dr. Schnau. Good morning and uh, dear members of the press. I'm representing the Copenhagen City Heart Study, a population study of 20,000 men and women with the purpose of prevention of ischemic heart disease and other diseases. It is of great importance that our results reach the population through the press, so a good collaboration with you is essential. And now I start my five minutes. <laughs> I think. I need some help. You just said I should push the press the button and it doesn't happen. I can help you also. Just click on your name. Yeah, I did that. Thank you. There you go. Well, uh, the Copenhagen City Heart Study, as I told you, is a prevention cardiological study. And this analysis today is um, from the third examination around 20 years back where 5,000 healthy men and women aged 21 to 90 years of age are included in this analysis. We don't go up to 100 years here because uh, if you are 90 years of age in Copenhagen, you stop bicycling. I don't know why. And in conclusion, I can tell you that it's the intensity and not the duration of cycling that is of greatest importance in relation to all cause mortality or longevity and even more pronounced for coronary heart disease mortality. What is intensity? We graded it into slow, average and fast based on the individual's own perception of intensity. How he feels when he is out biking, is it hard or is it not hard? Duration is easier, less than half an hour a day in average, half an hour to one hour and more than one hour average of cycling per day. And we adjusted for the following potential confounders, age, HDL cholesterol, number of different sports activities, household income, body mass index, smoking status, systolic blood pressure, alcohol consumption, and diabetes mellitus. And what is our results? Here you see this multivariate adjusted survival benefit in years. If you look at the reference, that's a person who is slow when he is bicycling and less than half an hour a day. And compared to the average intensity, he'll win, if he is a man, 2.9 years longer life in Copenhagen. If you do fast bicycling, it's 5.3 years longer life. If you go out just duration, it doesn't matter at all if you are out there less than half an hour, half to one hour and more than one hour. So you have to be intense when you are out on the bicycling. All, almost the same differences is seen among the women. Here are more or less statistical uh, table where you first see duration less than half an hour. You have slow, that's a reference. If you go from slow to average, the hazard ratio, as we called it, is 0.67. And if you do fast bicycling, 0.45. That's to say that the mortality is 46% less if you are a fast biker than a slow biker. If you go to coronary heart disease, and that's, of course, the main topic, the difference is much greater. The fast bicycle, he will have 82% less of dying of coronary heart disease than the slow one. If you go to between half an hour and one hour a day, you will find the same differences to see it. Maybe the fast you see is 0.44, so you really you almost become 100 years of age. And if you go to coronary heart disease, the differences are even higher. But then maybe that's a little interesting, so to say, if you are out there more than one hour a day and you are fast, you are still much better off than slow or average. But if you compare to one half an hour to one hour, it's worse maybe to be too long out on the street 
fast bicycling. So the curve could be U-shaped. A little is not good. Too much intensity is not good, or not that good. So I would suggest you to stay around less than one hour when you go bicycling today and the next days. What is the effects of exercise? The maximal oxygen uptake improves, insulin sensitivity increases, the lipid profile improves, blood pressure lowers, platelet aggregation increases, fibrinolytic activity increases, cardiac function improves, immune function improves, inflammation markers reduces, obesity reduces, and the psychological function improves. That is stress reduces, well-being improves. And all these improvements are more pronounced in high intensity exercise. So in conclusion, this observational study has shown that the intensity and not the duration of cycling and walking, we also studied walking, is of most importance in relation to all-cause mortality and to coronary heart disease mortality. The, this association was even more pronounced for coronary heart disease death. So our general recommendation to all ad adults would be that brisk cycling is preferable to slow. Thank you. Thank you. Now the presentation is open for discussion. Yes, please. You, you use the microphone. Okay. Hello, uh, Stephen Adams, Daily Telegraph from London. Um, would this, would, the, would these results be um, <coughs> applicable to other forms of exercise? Well, it's the only one we'll take straight bicycling, and then we have adjusted for all other kinds. If you take all the normal, greater uh, studies, they put it together as a volume. And it's a mixture of duration, intensity, and frequency. Here we just took it sharp cycling and adjusted for all the other activities too. And then the classical factors. And we've done the same in walking and published it in British Medical Journal the year 2000. Where's the difference between um, fast and slow? It is 15 kilometers per hour, is 20, yeah. is 25? You know, our, our po that's the same as some of the editors said that they didn't want us to publish it, but it's going to be published. Uh, because if you're a 20 years old person, or 80 years old person, 90 years old person, you shouldn't put a speed on them. It's their own perception of intensity. And the work physiologist tells us that you get a training effect if you are a little breathless. And it's not four minutes per kilo kilometer or 20 kilometer speed or so on. You can't compare 80 years and say he has to do the same as a 20 year. So the own perception is much better, we think. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> as far as I saw your, your slides, when you are cycling to, you, to work yeah. every morning, and yes. you, you cycle an hour a day or, or more, and um, you, you drive slowly, for yeah. not sweating too much, you die sooner. No, yeah, yeah, you die sooner than the <laughs> than the faster one. That's right. In Copenhagen, in Copenhagen, we have we have uh, a third of the workers in Copenhagen are going by bicycle. More than a third in New York, it's 0. 0.000 per mile. <laughs> so we, the Danes and the Dutch, they really do the bicycling. Is there a mistake on your slide about the platelet aggregation? It seems the platelet aggregation would be less instead of increased. Yeah, yeah it's less. Okay, because it says platelet aggregation oh my God. increases. Oh my God. So that means we clot more. Yeah, I put it in by purpose to see who is awake or not. <laughs> okay, just curious and no, worried. You're right. Fine, thank you. Sorry, one more question. Should governments advocate, rather than um, say two and a half hours moderate exercise a week, should they increasingly um, advocate um, shorter periods of intense exercise? Yeah, I think it's going a little towards that direction. Now we say half an hour, a moderate, a day. That's a general in the States and Europe. But we put a little intensity into it. But, and it's, uh, it's not in yet, but it's, I think it's coming. You can't just uh, do it too slowly. Hi, Pat Rich, Canadian Health. Is the, isn't the, the difference here 
greater between low intensity and high intensity cycling than cycling and not cycling? I mean, the message should be do something, right? Rather than uh, I think do the, something no, intensely. The intensity is, is more heavy, so to say, here than normally. You really get, I mean, if you go from, you take the first one, less than half an hour, that's all right with a lot of people. Uh, you go from one relative risk of death to 0.54. I mean, that's, you really get benefit more than putting your money into the bank. Right, but I was just, just wondering, that, does, how does that difference compare to not cycling at all versus any cycling? In relative risk. Yeah, that's right. We 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 had in the the non the non is around slow in our population. But you're right. But we adjust. You know, we we adjust for all the other activities. Ten other activities are the same. So we we think you can't do it better. Hope fully. Dr. Schnorr, can I can I just make can I'm here. Oh. <laughs> just to ask you to put it very clear. Do you think that the fact that these are people in the Danish population that are already very active and are cycling, would this make a difference? I want to come back to the last comment, compared to a population that is absolutely sedentary, because mm -hmm. it might be that if you then push them to be very to do to be active at a very high intensity or a high intensity, the picture might be slightly different. No, because we, I think this is an important message. We don't push them; they push themselves. They say okay, that but I feel mm -hmm. that it is a little restlessness, so to say. Even if it's Indians in Chile or some, we think uh, from work physiologists, you will get the oxygen uptake and the platelet decrease and so on. Okay. When you when you yourself feel that now you're doing something, but a, a very simple ex example, yeah. a 55-year-old person with a couple of cardiovascular risk factors reads the message and says, "I don't have to walk for 30 minutes. I go and boost myself for one hour a week, high intensity." Is that the same thing? <laughs> because this well, is these are healthy people. We have taken away all these ischemic heart disease, the stroke the cancer people. So they are as healthy as they can be when they come into our analysis. But I think the cardiac patients should do the same. Uh, could you also make a comment on fast cycling is also a, an issue of accidents, for example. If you are fast cycling, um, is there any netto clinical benefit from fast cycling and uh, the cardiovascular? Well, all the bicyclists in Copenhagen have a helmet. So when they, they have hell, everybody, I don't know why, it looks a little peculiar to me. I'm the only one without helmet. So, so the accident is a very low figure. And they have, they have their own streets, you know. They have 500 kilometers of bicycle, what do you call them, streets in Copenhagen. It's all over. Uh, one more question. Um, in the old Bruce protocol studies, the patients that could not perform well had a higher all-cause mortality because there were things inherent to them that made them not live longer. So could that be a confounding issue here that even though these are healthy people, you did not maybe account for the fact that they had bad hips, arthritis, et cetera, and those people could not do the intensity and perhaps their mortality is greater no, from the, all the, the causes. one that couldn't do the bicycling because of the hips and so on, they were not included. If you only had, they had uh, two limbs, not only one. So we, we included the healthy all over, also hip, knees and so on. Yes, but the same here. They should be bicycling daily to come into the study. So we don't know what the other one. They have to be operated upon. Okay. Thank you very much. We have to stop.